Yanao Kayima. Come and walk George's River Country with me. Wadeo Dharawal Gurad. Welcome to beautiful Dharawal country. My name is Shannon Foster and I'm a Sydney Dharawal saltwater woman from the Bidjigal and Gudaral peoples of this land. We've been here since the beginning of time and today I've been brought here by Georges River Council to share some of our stories with you. We're celebrating Reconciliation Week. Reconciliation Week is a really important time for Aboriginal people. It begins on the 27th of May and finishes on the 3rd of June. They're two really important dates for us. The 27th of May marks the 1967 referendum and the 3rd of June is about the Mabo decision from the Supreme Court. If you don't know about those dates, you should look them up. They're really important. This year's theme for Reconciliation Week is in this together. And I think this year has brought some really trying times for Australia and we've learnt the power of being in this together. For reconciliation, we need to go on this journey together for the future of Australia and the future, particularly for Aboriginal cultures, stories and histories. So Yana Okaima, come and walk beautiful George's River with me. family are the Sydney Dharawal people. We've been here since the beginning of time. Living here on the Georges River and what we know as Gamay or Botany Bay and all around the Sydney region. We've walked these lands and across this waterway here on Georges River for millennia and we have stories that have been passed down through our family for thousands and thousands of years about the plants and the animals, the waterway, rules to live by, the laws of this country, the language, the songs. My great-great-grandmother Kate Foster lived in the abandoned government boat sheds in Circular Quay in the 1800s and there's a lot of stories written about her in European notes and in newspapers and in different records of the day. Unfortunately she was forced then to move to La Perouse to an Aboriginal mission and that's where she had my great-grandfather, Tom Foster. Tom is an amazing man. He is an activist and a performer. He was part of the 1938 Day of Mourning March and he was also an artist. And he made things like this mangrove boomerang. This is one of his boomerangs that he made in the 1930s to commemorate the opening of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. These boomerangs are made from mangrove wood that you find here on the Georges River. This place, the Georges River, is known as bitter water country or sour water country. We know it as Bitigalo. Bitigal country is about the bitter water that comes here and that arises here from where two different types of water meet. That's known as Tukora. So Garigalo is salt water that comes in from the ocean and Natigalo is fresh water that comes in from the mountains and falls from the rain. And where those two types of water meet, you get bitter water or sour water country, which is where this place gets its name, Bidigal country. You may also hear Bidigal country. And so it's here where mangroves grow that my great grandfather and my grandfather and my uncles would come and collect mangrove wood to make boomerangs just like this one. Mangrove wood is incredibly hard and incredibly strong, but incredibly light as well. So it's perfect for making boomerangs that will fly through the air and return back to you. important plant here on Bidigal country is the Kasharina tree. We know her as Dalwa and she reminds us of our grandmothers and our aunties, the women we know as Bidi, which is where Bidigal gets its name from. 
And so the Casuarina tree is an amazing tree and these leaves drop and leave a beautiful soft fall here on the forest floor that we can sit on as we string and weave and listen to stories from our aunties and our grandmothers. It's a very safe place to sit. There's no undergrowth. Nothing can grow in a space where the Casuarina leaves have fallen. And so reptiles and snakes, lizards and things, they don't like the areas under the Casuarina tree, under the Dalwa. And so we get to sit here in safety. So she's also known as a safety tree or the babysitter because we tell our children to go to the Casuarina tree, to go and sit with Dalwa if they get lost in the bush because we'll find them there. It's very hard to find one of our little ones if they're in under with all the undergrowth. It's also very dangerous because that's where the snakes and the lizards like to hang out. And so here under Dalwa, we get to listen to stories and we get to learn things that we need to know as children. Uh, one of the stories that we like to talk about is about Dalwa's seed, we call the Manyamali, which means like sort of to catch or to chase away. And they're kind of like dream catchers, I guess. Uh, what we do is we give them to our little ones when they've got worries or they can't sleep at night and they've had a bad dream. And you roll it in your hands and you blow on it three times. <laughs> and you tell them on your Mali all of your worries and your fears. And the bush spirits will chase them away and they'll get their feet stuck in all the little holes where the seeds are. Now I want to show you one of my favourite plants. It's called Lamandra grass. It's amazing. Some people think it's just a weed. It grows everywhere. Here's a Lamandra here. It's such a useful plant. I'm going to show you some things about Lamandra. So it's a really, really tough plant and it's really, really hard to pull the strands out. But I've been taught by my family how to do it. My dad and my uncles and aunties have shown me if you get right in on the fresh strands, you can pull them straight out. Super duper tough. And this bit here, if you're really thirsty and you're out there having a walk around country here on Kayima, you can use Lamandra grass for a bit of moisture. You chew on it mm, and suck it and it gives you a nice little bit of water. Tastes a bit like peas and beans. It also is really good because you can split it. It's called Lamandra longifolia. It's got long leaves that split really evenly and they can be used for stringing and weaving. It's also got, produces seeds and you have to be really careful if you're going to be using the seeds because they are covered in spikes and spines. So you have to sort of be careful before you approach Lamandra to make sure that you don't get prickled, but also make sure you don't accidentally bump into one of the locals here. And when I say the locals, I'm talking about the snakes and the blue tongue lizards that like to hang out under the Lamandra grass. And so I've been taught that before you approach the Lamandra, you always stomp a few times so that the reptiles can feel the vibrations of your feet and they know you're here. And so they won't come out and scare you or give you a nasty bite when you try to reach in to grab some strands out. Lamandra also has an edible root. It's delicious. It's sort of like a potato-y kind of um, tuber that grows under the ground. You can crush the seeds and make a bread with it. And the grass here is what we dry out to be able to make string and baskets and little dilly bags and things to use. So this is Lamandra when it's nice and fresh. And what we do is we dry it out and then we dry it out and it becomes more like this. This is quite brittle and a little bit difficult to work with. It's really, really hard on your fingers. And so we soak it overnight in water and then you can start using it. It's an amazing grass. I've made some things here with it. Here's some weaving. This is a type of coil weaving that comes from this part of Australia. Aboriginal people have been doing this kind of weaving in Southeast Australia since the beginning of time. We can also use the string to put tools together. And look at this beautiful dilly bag. I didn't make this one. I bought this one. This takes a lot of time and patience. It's made from grass and the grass has been dyed using ochre. You can find ochre here along the shores of the Georges River here in Kaima. It's in amongst the sandstone 
and you can wash it down and use it to dye grasses and fabrics and all kinds of things. You can even use it for paint on your skin. So now I'll show you how to make some warua or string. So you take two pieces of anything. I've got one long piece of raffia here and I fold it in half and I'm going to make a little knot there at the top just to keep it all together. And that little loop might be handy later. And then you have two strands and what you need to do is to twist one strand away from you and then bring it over the front and swap it with the other strand which you then twist away from you and swap it over to the front and pick up the other strand. I always think about it as the tide goes out and then it comes back in again. And the tide goes out and it comes back in again. So you're doing two opposing motions, twisting away from you and then folding towards you and picking up the other strand. And eventually you'll be able to do it without even thinking. It's an amazing thing to be able to do because it can help your brain to concentrate and listen to the stories that your elders will be telling you. So you make string while you're listening to stories. And then when you, ever you come near that piece of string or you use it, you might tie it around your wrist or you might make something with it, you'll remember the things that you were talking about and the things that you heard and you learnt when you were making that piece of string. The memories will be embedded in the string for you. So it becomes a really important memory device. Now a really, really easy way of telling if you're making the string in the right way is if you let it go, it doesn't come apart. It stays together perfectly. I love making string, it's very therapeutic. You can make lots of it really, really quickly. And that's one way of doing it. We have quite a few different ways of doing it. But this is the easiest and the best way to do it, especially if you're just a beginner learning how to do it. And that's what we call warua, or string. So this is a gulima. A gulima is a bowl that's made from the knots of a tree just like this big river red gum. So when one of the branches of the tree falls, the bark forms a lump or a knot that can then be cut off and hollowed out to make a bowl, which is really handy when you're out here on country on Kaima. Now it can take months to dig out the inside of this bowl. But what you could do, and what we do do, is we hand it over to the termites. So you find yourself a termite mound and you put your big chunk of wood on top of the termite mound, covering their hole, and they will come up and eat the wood away, creating a bowl shape like this, which is a much quicker way of doing it. You just gotta be careful that they don't get too hungry and start making holes in your gulima. This one has been made by Uncle Wadi from Wakanya beautiful piece of river red gum from New South Wales. Down here on Kaima, you'll also find this plant, the Banksia. It's a pretty common plant, most people will know it and probably not think too much about it and how it's used, but it's a really important plant for us. So the flowers here on the Banksia have really, really delicious nectar. You'll notice that birds and sometimes even at night possums will come out and the Nuganuni, the uh, flying fox, will come out and eat these flowers because they're really super sweet. And it's the same for us as well. So the first thing in the morning when you hear Gugugara, the kookaburra call, just as the sun's about to come up, you get out as quickly as you can, you get your gulima, which is your wooden bowl, fill it with fresh water, and you go and wash the flowers. Yes, we actually wash flowers. So if we were to pick all these flowers, 
there'd be nothing left for future generations of this plant. And we're always thinking about how we can be sustainable and make sure that there is food available for other living things here, but also for the future. So the flowers are really important, obviously, because they produce the seeds of a plant, which will then go on to make new generations of the plant. So we don't ever pick flowers. If you can ever avoid picking flowers, please don't ever pick flowers. What you do is we get the bowl of fresh water and we wash the flowers and we just dip them in the water and collect as many dips as possible from all the different flowering plants here. And it makes a really delicious, super sweet drink. It's just like having a glass of fresh juice for breakfast. And it's really good, especially when it's strong for medicine, for babies that aren't doing well or elderly people. And then when the flowers finished flowering, you get these great seed cones. I've got some here. And put into a fire, they burn like hot coals and they're brilliant. And that's what we use in the bottom of our canoe to make a fire as we travel around the waterways catching fish. The Georges River is just part of a huge interconnected network of waterways throughout Sydney. Our people have been travelling along these waterways for millennia and one of the best ways that we know how to do that is in a canoe, a bark canoe. These waterways provide so much food, it's an abundance of food. You can see all around me there's oysters on the rocks, shellfish, there's crabs in the mud. And there's also fish in the water, or malgoro, we would call it. And so we use canoes that are stripped from a piece of bark. So imagine that this Coolamon is just a small version of a canoe that we would use out there on Kaima. Now women are mostly responsible for fishing from canoes, using line with shell hooks. Men would fish from the banks and from the rocks and the rocky shorelines using spears and spearing fish and even stingray and shark and whatever else that can be found in the waters around Sydney. And so imagine this is our canoe. And in that canoe is um, enough room for a mum and her baby and sometimes another adult. So we take our babies with us, we wouldn't leave them home alone. And they'd be in the canoe with us and we would paddle with all of the other women in our family and sing songs as we paddled and went through the waterways and the song lines in our area to find food. And we'd use fishing line, which is exactly the string that we take from Lamandra and that we made earlier. And we'd use fishing line with shell hooks. Now, this shell is one of the most common shells to use for a shell hook. It's called a turbo shell. It once had a little squishy animal that lived inside it. And we find these around the beaches and all around the area in Sydney. And as you can see, when it's broken open, it has a beautiful shimmer to it. So it's like a lure for the fish. And you can grind it down and make a little shell hook, or a butter we call them. You tie it onto your line and you go fishing, drop it into the water, and the fish are attracted by the lure of your shell. Now I don't know about you, but when I go through drive throughs I can't wait to get home before I start eating. And it's the same when you're in a canoe and you've just caught some fish. Think of this as the world's earliest and first drive through because what we have in the bottom of our canoes is a fire. Now this is a wooden canoe with a fire burning in the bottom of it. How on earth doesn't the fire go through and create a hole and make the canoe sink? So think about it, this is what we do. We can either use sand. Sand doesn't burn, not at the temperatures a fire burns. Or we could use mud. 
or we could use some green leaves or even one of these big shells from the mud oysters or the abalone. And we pop that in the bottom of our canoe and then we take these that have been burning in our fires. These are banksia cones. There's banksias everywhere around here on Kaima. And the banksia cone burns like a hot coal. And so you can pick it up with two sticks or with a thick green leaf and pop it into the bottom of your canoe. And so you've got hot coals in your canoe. So as soon as you pull a fish up, you can start cooking it and start eating it layer by layer. So really it is the world's very first drive through So here on the Georges River, we're on Bittigal country. Bitty is bitter or sour water country. It's swamp lands and it's mud and it's mangroves. It's formed when two waters meet. And the two kinds of water that are meeting here is Garigalo, salt water, and Natigalo, which is fresh water or sweet water that you can drink. So if this is the Sydney coastline, and this is Garigalo country out here, and the salt water that runs through the ocean. And it enters here on a big floodplain, or what used to be a big floodplain known now as Gamay or Botany Bay. And it formed the Georges River and the Cooks River and all of the other rivers that come off that estuary. Up here we have the Parramatta River and that goes out west also. And you can see how Sydney's a big floodplain. So here we have Garigalo, which is salt water. And here we have Natigalo, you would have heard of the Natai River which is fresh water and water that falls from the mountains and spring water that comes up out of the ground and rain that falls. And where these two waters meet along this system, it creates country we know as Bidigalo, which is bitter water or sour water. And here in this country, it's where everything begins, where life begins. It's where we remember our women, our Bidi, our grandmothers and our aunties. And we remember also that the most smallest part of life is important to the whole system. Everything's interconnected. Everything is part of a huge story that we're all involved in. And so we all have to look after each other and look after all the spaces that are here. We can look after these spaces by making sure that the environment is protected. We need to make sure that we're sustainable, that we think of our future and that we think of the generations that come after us and that we honour the generations that came before us. And so when I look at a work like this that shows the interconnectedness of all of these different spaces, I remember that we're all part of a really, really big story. And we all have to be respectful of that story and of every part of it, from the smallest, tiniest little ant and the little mud crabs that you'll find here along the shorelines of Georges River, right up to us and the trees and the land and everything. We're all joined and we're all together. And we need to remember that. So I'd like to thank you all for coming for a walk with me today on Kaima. It's been such a beautiful day and I think it's a wonderful reminder of the theme of Reconciliation Week in this together. It's been a really challenging year for everybody and we're just starting to be able to come out and enjoy spaces and places like this again. And I think while we're out here, we should always remember that this year has definitely taught us that we are in this together. And so by coming with me today and looking at Kaima country with me and all the beautiful aspects of it, you have come with me and been part of my journey together. Georges River Council has always valued and respected my family's knowledges and we've had a very long friendship with them. And so it's wonderful that we get to have these opportunities to create moments like these for us to be in this together. Yano Kayima, Dijari Guru Thank you for remembering our ancestors.